I hate it when I have to have a interface cable, a dongle or something in my ham radio kit that kind of does one job and then that's all it does and it forever lives with this one radio and you know there's fifty dollars down the drain i'm always looking to reduce the amount of things that i have to keep on hand or having a couple of the same thing that can do double duty for multiple radio kits and then i don't have to worry about oh i forgot that dongle specifically for one radio etc etc i know i'm rambling but i have a point I promise. Today we're taking a look at the DigiRig. The DigiRig is a audio and serial interface for your ham radios, and there are a lot that this device will interface with. We're talking Baofengs through Yesus and Shegu HTs and HF radios, and there's a lot that will open the door for capabilities by using this device. So let's take a look at it. So here's the DigiRig. It's this small little device that you can use for interfacing your computer to your radio. This works in a pretty interesting way. So it's USB-C to USB-A um, when you buy the kit. And on one end you have an audio and serial connection. Now it, it comes in a kit for different radios. In case in point, this is the Baofeng kit. There's a black cable, a black ended cable with the Baofeng lead that would go to the audio jack. This is your audio interface. However, if you want to program your Baofeng, there's also a green connector cable, and that goes to serial. And then you simply just plug this into your computer on the USB-A side, and you can program it using something like Chirp. But in my case, and what the demonstration is going to be today, I want to use the audio plug. I want to take my Baofeng right here, Remember with Baofeng, shove that in hard, all the way in there hard. Um, I'm going to use this to interface with my tiny laptop and do WinLink packet with this. So there's no reason why I can't plug this guy in here and then make a software packet radio connection without having to use a TNC using specialty software on the computer side to make a connection to a local WinLink node to collect my email. I will note here on the website where the Digi link can be found, there is also a link to different pre-made cables that they have. So they have different versions of the Digi link. Right now I'm looking at the 1.6 model. There is a USB-A to USB-C connector. And then you start getting into the different various cables that are available. Yesu FT8 cables, so your 817, your 818 for instance. Baofeng kit connectors, Elecraft KX cords for the DigiRig, so this will do Elecraft as well. You have IC706, Lab599 TX500 cables, an RS232 cord for the DigiRig, uh, Shegu G90 cords, so you name it. Basically, Baofeng again, G90 car cable. Anyway, you can go to the website and find out more, but the cool part about this is really for a lot of radios, all you're going to need is this one little guy here, and you're simply going to swap out to a different interfacing cable to allow it to connect to your computer. So let's uh, plug this all together. I'll get WinLink started up, and I'll show you a little bit about what I'm doing. All right, so here's my GPD Pocket 2. Uh, I'm just going to go down here to WinLink, start up WinLink. I run it as an administrator. Now, I would uh, run Vara FM uh, to do this test, but sadly, the Vara FM nodes are not very close to me, so I can't actually make a contact. So we're going to run Packet because, sadly, Vara FM is not close. So Packet WinLink. Packet WinLink will open a session over here when it opens. Here is your WinLink session on this side. This is Sound Modem, which is produced and made by... UZ7HO. You can find a cool little downloadable to explain how to make this work. But basically, once we have our bow fan connected on this end and we're on the correct frequency, which in this case is to node KE6VZZ, uh, uh, once we have a connection on that frequency, we'll start transmitting packet data and receiving packet data. So, speaking of the bow fan here, Let's turn it on. 
All right, so I have this already on the right frequency, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you what you need to do. Go to menu, squelch, I leave squelch off. I've found that's the best setting um, to be able to receive the signals coming in. We're gonna go up to transmit power, make sure that is on high. That is the most important thing you need to do to make this work. So exit out of that. We're on 14970. We're gonna plug in our cable, make sure that we're connected to our antenna. Okay, so now you can see the waterfall is populating. And I'm gonna do a, just a quick check. We're gonna go to channel selection. And yeah, it is 14550. All right, what are we on? That's not correct. Let's go 14550. And just so we can copy, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run the ICOM here. As what often happens with uh, WinLink nodes, sometimes they're on, sometimes they are not. Uh, this one was not on, so we're changing to the next one. And we're connected to Mark's Gateway Supporting Emergency and Routine Digital Communications. So I'll go ahead and orient my antenna here. And you can see on the left-hand side here, all the emails are coming in. This is something that you could do um, portable. You could have a portable setup to be able to make this all work. So that's where we're gonna let it run. All right, then the next one is let's do chirp. So I'll take the serial connection, plug in there, into the Baofeng. Bring up chirp. All right, so we're gonna pull from radio. So I'll click radio, download from radio. All right, so this is COM10 is the COM port, the physical, you know, the serial port, the device manager serial port that goes to the digi rig. And we're gonna hit okay. And we are cloning. You can see the cloning line. The light's on because I have squelch off, but uh, we should now see this come in. This is a brand new Baofeng, no memory load on it. So we're just gonna see one channel when it pops up. And that's it. That's the guy right there. So uh, we can make a change really fast. So let's add, uh, I don't know, one. we'll just add simplex. Stop it. Six dot five two zero. Okay, that's it. Now we'll upload to radio. And we're cloning. You can see that's happening right there. So there you go. All right, we've completed the load. So if we go to memory here, one, four, six, five, two, zero. So there you go. And so you know how to do it at least. Here's uh, WinLink Express. I'll, I'll show you the shots that I did. So I'm gonna go to Packet, WinLink up at the top. Click on Open Session. Okay, you get a new Packet Session. This opens up Sound Modem. Sound Modem is a piece of software you can download. I'll put the link in the description. You'll place it in a directory uh, and you're gonna point WinLink at it. So you, under your Packet Session, which is right here, you're gonna go to Settings. It's gonna pop up this window. You're going to use, just copy this basically, except place uh, place the app you want to run in the location that you want. In this case, I'm running sound modem in the directory for WinLink. So yeah, just copy this screen. This is the sound settings for, for WinLink. Over on settings side on sound modem, I'll show you what that looks like too. And again, you just screenshot and copy these. This is what I'm using for the sound modem configuration. So copy that as you need to. And then under settings, 
modem. Those are the settings I'm using as well. So just uh, feel free to copy these, make them the same, and that will work on your end. And then you can follow one of my other videos on actually using WinLink and how to do what you need to do. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the capability in a nutshell. This little digi rig is pretty cool. You have both serial capability and audio capability, which for a Baofeng is gonna be one or the other, right? Serial to program or audio for doing digital modes like, uh, like WinLink. If you are using this with a Shagu, an HF radio or an Elecraft, then you're gonna use both the serial port and the audio port, right? Serial port is gonna give you the ability to PTT the radio and do CAT control for setting frequency, whereas audio is gonna be the audio in and out, received audio into the computer to decode and the outgoing audio out of the speaker into your computer. So what do you think of the DigiRig? I like the fact that with one unit, I can work with my Shegu radios, Kenwood, some of the Yesus, Baofeng if you're so inclined, and my other HF radios as well for doing not just audio for things like WinLink, FT8, JSA call, but then also serial control if you want to do programming. A super, super cool device that Dennis is uh, doing a great job on. The link is in the description if you'd like to take a look at the DigiRig. It'll take you to Gigaparts. This is an affiliate link, so I will get a little piece of the action if you do buy that. So just keep in mind, uh, this was something that was sent to me by the creator to take a look at. And I think it's really cool, and I think I've demonstrated why it might have value for you in what you do with ham radio. So that'll be it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. If you could, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and clicking that bell for whenever I post a video and go live. And your comments are appreciated. Let me know what you think about the DigiRig down below. Thanks so much, 73.